Hello everyone, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and I'm back today with some finished pieces to share with you guys, especially from some of the things that I've gotten through the month of October. So I'm really excited to do that. I have some things from the dollar bead box, the bargain bead box, some other pieces, and then some original bead weaving designs to share with you to finish it up. So lots of things to look at. I like to talk about my design process and more specifics on what I use to give you guys some helpful information and background on what I'm sharing with you. So hopefully it helps you out, maybe inspires you to think of the contents of boxes you may have received in a different light or spark some new ideas with you. It's always fun to share what we're up to. Before I get into all the pieces, I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you haven't heard of them, Skillshare is an online learning community for creative individuals. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including graphic design, productivity, arts and crafts, and so much more. This month I discovered a class which I found particularly interesting called Floral Resin Jewelry Basics by Sarah Trafford. I've always been interested in learning more about creating jewelry components with resin, and I think this video offers a lot of helpful information about simple resin crafting from start to finish. And that's just one example of the huge number of classes they have available. Now more than ever, with so many people still being required to remain at home, as we go into the winter months, I think it's an awesome time to learn new skills, keep your mind active with practical ideas, and have some fun learning. So use this time to your advantage. Normally their service is a little less than $10 per month, but because Skillshare is sponsoring today's video, they're generously offering the first thousand people who click the link below the opportunity to become a member absolutely free. You do have to put in your credit card information, but you can cancel before the trial period ends. So definitely take advantage of their thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback. Just click on that link below the video to sign up and try it out with no obligation. All right, guys, so this is the first necklace that you've already had a peek at, and the beads that I used are pretty much exclusively from the dollar bead box. I hadn't been giving that box as much love as some of the other ones, so I thought, let me go ahead and make a few pieces from the contents. We had gotten some of these check glass beads, the pillow cut. This one was really unique, as well as these. They remind me of almonds, the way that they are table cut and have that brown and black modeled effect on the edge. We also, of course, received a strand of these gorgeous check glass fire polish beads. Didn't have to do much with those. They are so beautiful on their own. And the golden tiger's eye, which I thought was a really cool addition to the box this month. And I was playing around and putting some things together kind of by color, and these really stood out to me as being things that worked very well together. The only thing that didn't come from the box bead-wise, if you want to call this a bead, was this pendant, and this was from a different subscription from the past. I had this on hand and thought it kind of brought all of those colors together, the bronzy, greenish tones with that verdigris on this brass and I felt like it just needed something else to bring it all together. Here's a closer look at the spokel I created and how I put it all together. So it's kind of something different than I've ever really done before. I like the way it looked and I just kept playing around till I got it situated to a way that I was happy. And I really liked these three components together, but I felt like by themselves, just on a single strand, it'd be a little long unless I was going for like a Y necklace. So then I thought, well, let me try to do two strands and how would I do that? So I decided to turn this into a connector, and you can see I played around a little bit with some wire on that one to turn that into a connector. The hole is actually right there on this bead, and I needed it to be positioned with a loop on the top and the bottom to connect all the components together. And then I attached this strand to the bottom of that bead and this strand to the top, and then I was able to do some wire wrap loops and tag onto that carved glass flower. I also turned these into connectors. As you can see, I used some wire to wire wrap loops on either side and brought these beads together. And just to show you another way that you can use two specialty beads, instead of just using them in say a pair of earrings or something like that, you can actually use them as some unique connectors. So here's this necklace all together, including the back where I added the chain and the extender chain. And this is just from my stash. This was a bead that kind of coordinated with everything. 
What I do is I keep this little box near me and it's got all sorts of little odds and ends. Just like if I have one random bead left over from a project or something, I'll just toss it in there. So it's kind of like a bead soup. And if I need a specialty bead to pull from to use on the back of an extender chain, that's a lot of times my go-to place if I don't have any additional beads from the project. So that is my first necklace from the dollar bead box. And of course I have all of these unboxings done in video. If you're not familiar with my channel, I have all of those as well as playlists for everything that I'm talking about today. All right, and here's the next set that I came up with from the contents of the dollar bead box. You can see that I used a lot of the blue items that they had in the box this month including the two whole candy beads with that really pretty silver splash on the top. I used some of those dark blue fire polish beads that came in both the three and the four millimeter, the little check glass flowers and these drops. Put them all together, added seed beads from my personal stash. As I did with the first necklace, I started putting the contents together by colors that I felt went really well together. And those blues, I thought, really complemented nicely with the light and that navy together. And then this is just a fun little pair of fringe earrings I created using the two whole candy beads and some of the flowers, the drops, some of the other things I had left over. Just wasn't sure how that was all going to come out, but I think they look pretty cute and fun with the necklace and a different way to use these two whole beads. Maybe if you just have a couple of them, you can turn them into a type of earring like that. Maybe that'll spark an idea for you. And then of course added the chain on the back from my stash and a piece with a little bit larger links on it and one of these blue drops that I had left over from the project to add to the extender chain. So there's an idea for you if you've gotten the dollar bead box. Maybe you're not sure what to do with the contents because a lot of times they are very mishmash. They're very random. It's definitely a sampler box. So it's not as easy, I don't think, to put a bunch of pieces together directly from the dollar bead box as it is, say, from the bargain bead box or Eureka Crystal Beads, their collections, which come with many different all coordinating items. And that's why I wanted to challenge myself this month to come up with a couple of pieces directly from the box to give you some examples of what you can do. All right, let's get into some bargain bead box items, shall we? So this month, the theme was Harvest Center. There was a lot of orange, a lot of very pretty burnt orange, but also some blues and greens. And with that too, I kind of separated out some of those colors and found what I felt looked really good together. And I really liked the very light seafoam green crystals with the crystal puffed coin beads. I thought those looked beautiful and I thought they really looked nice with the silver components. We had gotten the silver component here as a pendant with I think 11 places where you could add beads dropping down as well as a couple of other smaller components that match that, which I'll show you in just a second that I turn into coordinating earrings. But here's a closer look at the pendant and you can see that I wire wrapped a spacer bead that they sent, just the plain round, as well as one of those more decorative ones and then added these little crystals on a small jump ring to the end of each of those wire loops. I also added a crystal in the center. I felt like that opening was begging for something like a frame. And since we got five of these puffed coins, it worked out. I could bring the fifth one down here to be the central focal and have two on either side. You can see I brought up some more of the spacers, some more of the crystals, and then I used the two toggle clasp round components as connectors as I do a lot, instead of using these as toggle components. There's a look at the necklace in full. You can see I added the chain that they included in the box as well as a little leaf on the back of the extender there. And then a pair of earrings that coordinated with that set. There's a look at this one with the component that looks very similar to the pendant on the necklace and just kind of did something very similar with those green crystals and the two spacers wire wrapping those on the bottom. And I love the way that this drapes all the movement and it's not too much like you could go crazy with all kinds of wild colors and making these really long and I think it's really easy to go crazy with these fringe components which is completely fine I just wanted something that kind of made them a little bit more understated 
which is why I went with the muted green and the tone on tone silver, which at first glance, it looks like one component, but then when you lift it up, you can see the movement. Since I haven't mentioned it already, I do sell my finished pieces on my website, workinganopal.com. So if there's anything here that you are interested in purchasing, I know a lot of you guys are more interested in creating, which is fine. But if there's any pieces that you're interested in purchasing, which are one of a kind, of course, you can head to my website and check that out. And if you don't see something that I've featured on a video, just send me an email and ask me about that because it's possible that I don't have that particular item listed yet. All right, guys, so here is the next set that I made from the Bargain Bead Box contents, and I went crazy with this pendant. This one came with the carnelian in the center and the silver filigree around it, and I went over the top, beaded around that, added these other carnelian rounds, the bicones, the check glass leaves, some seed beads, all kinds of things in there, and really just played up that harvest fallish look. This was another one of those pieces where I just started beating. I wasn't sure where it was going. I had to take it apart and retry it. And through trial and error, I got it how I wanted it and really made this into a statement piece. I'll show you the back of that in just a second. And then I added some more of these carnelian rounds. Going up the rest of the necklace, you can see that I did do these kind of in a color gradient. So I have the deeper tones at the bottom and on the pendant as well, because the pendant was darker than the rest of the beads I had on the strand. So I was trying to kind of play up that lighter to darker look all the way down to the pendant, bring your eye down there, and then bam, you have that focal. Also added in a couple of these connectors that they sent in the box. Some of these leafy spacer beads and some more of the chain. So here's a look at the pendant up close to give you a little bit of an idea of what I did with it. You can see the filigree. It had all these openings where you could attach your thread or your wire or whatever you were doing to that. And so I really use that to my advantage. There is a look at the back so you can get an idea of how this was put together using size 11 C beads and also a better look at what the pendant looked like initially and kind of how this is structured so the leaves are staying solidly in place. I mean, they are on there good and they are not flapping around. That was one of the challenges I had when first creating it. And so I had to do those beaded structures down the back to really hold it all together and it kind of reminds me of a wreath or some type of a tablescape where you might combine leaves and fruit or leaves and berries, something like that. And then with the additional beads I had, I made a very simple pair of earrings to go with the necklace. And I made a three strand bracelet using quite a few of the beads as well. And also brought in some of those agate beads with the burnt orange added some of these connectors that I used in the necklace as well, and some more of the leaf spacers. The one green leaf I had left over as an accent near the toggle clasp, and some bead caps as well. There's some of those plain metal spacers, all sorts of different things popping up in that bracelet. And then I just pulled from my little bead soup container to add this leafy accent on the back of the necklace, which is the same type of check glass maple leaf, just in a different color, more amber, but also goes with the whole theme. All right, now getting into some more bead weaving. I had shared a tutorial for both this necklace and bracelet in one video. This is the two hole herringbone stitch using the Checkmates Diamond two-hole beads. So just to give you an idea of what you might be able to do with those, as well as some Japanese seed beads. And then I wanted to take it one step further and see if I could use that stitch in another way. And instead of doing seed beads at the bottom that would lay around the neck, try with some other beads, creating more of a fringe-like effect. So I pulled these gecko beads from my stash you can see they're like little teeny tiny dagger beads, these check glass beads here, the green ones that look like little leaves. And they worked beautifully in this design and also brought in a different color of seed beads. So there's actually two different colors here instead of just one. And the pink was just to give this more of a look of berries or flowers or something like that. 
and it reminds me of a trellis. This worked beautifully. So if you have any gecko beads and you feel like trying to attempt to add those in around the herringbone stitch, I don't have a specific tutorial showing you that step, but that's an idea of how you can take it another step further and create a whole nother look based on that stitch and also how you can just perhaps do a partial collar or beaded portion and then add the rest to chain. That worked out very well for me with this one because I ran out of the two whole diamonds and would have needed to purchase more of those to complete an entire necklace fully beaded. And then we had gotten the tubular herringbone pattern in the Potomac Beads Best Bead Box this month. So I did go ahead and whip up that pattern. It was a lot of fun to put this together. I really like the two accent beads that they suggested to use at the end. I think that's a great example of a way that you can finish up one of these rope style seed bead stitches neatly as an alternate way of using maybe a bead cone or some other type of finding to cover up the edges and also how that round clasp complemented the two rounds. I think that went really well together. So this of course was done using size 80 seed beads and not really a stitch that I had done much with before, although I had been wanting to for a while. So I was glad to have that to work on. And that box is just such a great way to expand your skills and give you lots of jumping off points for even other projects that you want to create. And then next, before getting into some of the pretty cool original bead weaving designs I have to show you, here is a herringbone style necklace done with the half teal of beads I had shared the bracelet before. This is a slimmer version of that and also done in a way that makes it curve nicely around your neck to turn it into a necklace. I had some requests on how do I create a necklace that will work with those herringbone bracelets that are really popular. And this one works up beautifully with two different size seed beads. You can alternate the stripes in this way, or you can do one inner stripe and one outer stripe, for example, or make it even wider if you want. So that tutorial is already done. And then just to go a little bit further with the half tila herringbone or quarter tila, I thought it'd be fun to see two quarter tilas put together to make a half tila size and see how that would come out in the herringbone stitch. And so it's pretty cool. Here's another idea. If you have the quarter tilas, put two of those together, maybe in two different colors and weave them together in this way. And that's the kind of effect you get. You can see with this purplish one, I use the two quarters in one stripe and then the half tilas in another stripe. This one's done with 11 OC beads and this one's done with 15. So you get a little bit of a different effect depending on what size seed bead you use. All right, so next I've already showed you this particular bracelet. This is from the Paradise Aquatic Collection from Eureka Crystal Beads. All the beads were found in that collection. So this is an original design I came up with and I like to make my designs in several different colorways and also try them in different ways to see which ways would be best to try to teach those in video tutorials for you guys. So this was my next attempt at that bracelet and I used some of these two-tone eight millimeter fire polish beads I had in my stash and it created this really unique color combination, something I wouldn't have normally put together, but it's different. I like it. You can see I also finished it off with a button clasp. These were from BB Craft. I got in a big bag of those in different metallic finishes. And so if I unbutton that for you and you take a look at the base of this bracelet, you can see that they're actually quarter tilas down here, which are forming the base of the bracelet. You don't actually see them on the top. You can see them just from the bottom and how that's put together. And again, those quarter tilas were found in the Paradise Aquatic Collection, as with all of the other beads in those sizes. And I'm often really inspired to put together new designs based on what they send. So that's just another color way of that bracelet. And hopefully I'll have a tutorial coming on that pretty soon. I have lots of new stuff to share and an ongoing list of different things that you guys have requested. So there is no end in sight. All right, here's the next bracelet that I created when I was trying to come up with something with these check glass cube beads. You might've heard me say in a couple of recent unboxings where these have popped up, I really need to try to use these six millimeter cube beads. I need to do something with them because I keep getting them 
and I haven't really come up with a specific design besides just stringing them. So I was really interested in coming up with a bead weaving design and you can see that this one came together beautifully after several different trial and error attempts. I also used the quadra tiles. So those are the four hole beads that you can see in this green color that are alternating with those cubes and also a couple of rows of 11 o seed beads and some 15 o seed beads. So another design that I really look forward to sharing with you guys, hopefully in the near future. And now I can say that I finally came up with something different for those six millimeter cubes. Next up, let's talk about a couple things from the Pumpkin Harvest collection by Eureka Crystal Beads. Now, the golden tone half tealas did not come from that collection, but these bright orange tealas did. And I know they probably pose a challenge to some. That bright orange can be a challenge to work with, in particular if you're not a lover of orange. However, I love how it looks with this deep antique gold tone. I think it looks beautiful as a backdrop for that. It looks really elegant. And this is a design I'm gonna be calling the ruched Tila bracelet. So like ruched, think like pleats, think of gathered fabric. And this is why I named it that because in the center, I have half Tila's that are actually gathered or ruched together, which gives us a little bit of texture and I think really complements a bright colored background like that. So. Another new design to stay tuned for, and hopefully I'll have a tutorial for that in the near future. I'm currently working on one of these in a yellow tone, some bright yellow tealas. So we'll see how that comes out and probably have that to share next time. All right, and then I have a design that was using the contents exclusively from that Pumpkin Festival. That's what it's called, Pumpkin Festival Collection by Eureka Crystal Beads from the month of October. We had gotten these chocolatey brown nibbits, these tangerine colored super duos, the backlit looking mini duos, the burnt orange metallic 15 o seed beads, and even some of these Miyuki cubes, which were really cool. And I put all of those together into this particular bracelet design. And I think I'm gonna call it the keystone bracelet because of that arched shape and it's got kind of that keystone in the center. And I am so pleased with this and how it came together, all those links. And what's cool too, is I can see even turning this into a necklace. If I just connected these a little bit differently, I could see that making a gorgeous statement necklace with chain going up the back. So if you picked up that collection, stay tuned for a future tutorial. I have another colorway to show you because when I set this down and looked at it from afar, I thought, man, it'd be cool to do two different colors of nibbits because I've seen that done in some other different nibbit designs where the colors kind of snake around each other. And I thought this would be a great example of how you could do that. So I looked through my stash and I found some of these light gold nibbits, as well as the gorgeous turquoise Picasso. I found some coordinating super duos and mini duos and also 15 O's. And instead of using Miyuki cubes here, I just used some 11 O seed beads and changed up the amount of 15 O's that went around them. So there's a look at this other colorway. I think it is so cool. I just love this bracelet so much. And I really like the effect of the two different colors of nibbits. Lots of fun playing around with those. They want to stick to each other. That's fine. All right. And the final items I have to share are another original design based on the brand new quad bow and pie duo beads from Potomac Beads. You can see these are the pie duos, look like little slices of pie there, and then the quad bows, which are a four hole bead, kind of in this bow-like shape. And I am so excited about how this looks like it's braided. Potomac Beads had sent everybody who had gotten that subscription, both of those new beads in black, which I thought was so cool that they sent those out to everybody. And they had also sent me the quad bows and pie duos and a few other different colors separately to play around with and try to come up with something to share. And that's how I got my hands on those gold ones and also put together another colorway using the Jet AB pie duos and black quad bows and used alternating colors of these 15 O's in both that 
bluish tone and the lime green to really bring that out. But I just love the braided effect. Four hole beads can seem really challenging and intimidating and for good reason. There's so many different shapes out there. So hopefully this will give you an idea of something different that you can do with these four hole shapes and unconventional, I think. And maybe you can make one of these along with me hopefully next month, especially if you've gotten those in your Potomac beads box this month. So here's a look at all those new tutorials to come. And one positive thing I can say about being required to stay home for the most part is that it has given me more time to be creative. And not only do I look at this like a job, one that I love, but it is also my therapy. I struggle on a daily basis with anxiety, as I know a lot of you guys do, and being able to keep busy and keep my hands busy, keep my mind busy, stay creative has helped me so much. And I'm just so appreciative to be able to do this, to bring you guys these videos, these pieces, and to have this creative outlet, especially right now, and how wonderful you guys are and so supportive and encouraging and kind, not only the comments to me, but in response to others. I think it's wonderful to see that we're just all here to create, to share, to have fun and focus on the positive. So thank you guys so much. There have been a ton of new subscribers lately. I want to say welcome. I'm so glad to have you guys and everybody else, of course, who's been along this ride with me for the past couple of years. You don't know how much it means to me to have your support. All right, guys. Well, that is all I have to share with you for the month of October and what I've been up to. I hope you enjoy checking out some of these finished pieces from specific boxes. Hopefully it gave you some inspiration and ideas or you just enjoyed checking them out. I certainly appreciate having you and would love to hear what you have to say down below. So feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know if you have a favorite piece here or let us know what you've been up to with the similar items from your boxes or anything else you'd like to say. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a big thumbs up. And while you're there, definitely hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when I'm up to more beading fun. You can come back and join me. Check out my social media links down below the video to follow along with me there as well. And you can peruse my website at orchidandopal.com. Also a big thank you to Skillshare because that really does help my channel. Having their sponsorship from time to time helps me bring you even more fun videos. Well, until next time, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I hope you stay inspired and healthy. And as always, happy beating.